I was going to do this yesterday, but um, didn't have the strength. I'm going to make it through this clear, clearly. Okay? So I'm going to have to pause at times. Because this isn't going to be easy. Twenty one years ago, twenty one years ago, I woke up with the absolute intent that morning of breaking up with my girlfriend at the time. She was an absolute succubus. She wanted to fight all the time. It was her way of controlling me. I like to argue and she learned that quick but I was ready to be done we were staying at my sister Sarah's apartment at the time and normally I'd just take myself to work or take you know I'd have my own car but the night before, I had um, just come in from Lubbock, Texas. I had gone out there and picked up my my boss's son, Mark. Mark, and um, and when I came in, uh, my dad was always big on books on tape. Eric, my little brother, just graduated call, um, high school. And uh, all the family was in town. And uh, I remember coming in and I had been listening to a book on tape. Cause that's what my dad did when he liked to drive. He drove back and forth to work a lot. He had usually 45 minutes there and 45 minutes back. Plenty of time to relax and listen to something educational or some story. So he passed that trait on to me, and it really did help pass time. And I had, I had uh, listened to a book that he had recommended. Remember, I came in through the front door and um, had that book in my hand, and I held it over his face, and I was like, man, that's a good book, Dad. Really good book. And he was laying on the couch. The kids were around. He was laying on the couch and he just looked up at me and he smiled. With my dad's crooked little teeth and wearing his glasses, he just smiled and shook his head. Yep. Didn't say anything. He shook his head. Carrie came and picked me up and I left my car at the house, which I normally didn't do. Normally I always drove it over to where we were staying at Sarah's, but that night I left it there. That was June 1st. 1999 
we argued that night and I laid there that night thinking I am breaking up with this bitch tomorrow I am fucking done with her I'm just sick of this shit that we got up I was calm about it When I know I'm going to do something, there's no need in being nervous. I knew what I, my plan was. She always wanted to fight with me right at the car. If I started any type of argument, she'd just control me. And so that morning I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Get something to eat, act all normal, and then go to the house, get my car, and I go to work. And I let her get to work. I'm going to call that bitch and dump her ass. I'm done with her. So we get up, get dressed, leave Sarah's apartment, go to McDonald's. I had my pancakes and high sea orange. And I'm sorry they don't sell high sea orange there anymore with, with McDonald's pancakes because that is seriously one of the greatest combinations ever known to man. And it was delicious. I still remember how good those pancakes tasted. They were so good. So, go to my house, and the way the driveway is, the house sits on an island, okay, and we had one of, one of the uh, only houses at the house, the way it sat, the, the street aching around the front is where the front of the house was and the back had this long driveway that like in first gear if you kind of like pulled up and like gave the clutch all the way out and then pushed it right back in that's how far the driveway was it was like you know but i mean it's enough to get going pretty quick so we pull in the driveway and it's got a long fence on the right side and these tall bushes and woods on the left side and a basketball goal up at the top of the driveway and there's my car and then I can see my dad's car and my mom's and it's kind of like, shit, dad's here. He'd been going through some depression and quite honestly, hard to get away from almost like Carrie. He just wanted to talk and I wanted to be there to listen. But sometimes I had to go to work. So I get out of the car, say goodbye, and I'm thinking this is the last time I close this car door. Boom. Got my cigarettes and lighter in one hand, high C orange in the other hand. Start walking up the driveway between my car and my dad's car, and I start going around the corner to where the carport is, where you would walk in to go into the back door. And um, right as I get to the edge of the carport, I'm not even at the edge of the carport. I'm actually at the front of my bumper. And it looks like my dad's standing there, almost like he's walking towards a storage room. Because his body position, where he, it was like he had just walked out the back door from, from the gay room. 
from from the game room as if he was walk into the storage room I still feel so guilty I still feel so guilty for thinking shit fuck man I don't want to deal with dad this morning I made the turn around my car I made the turn to right there at the carport And I realized he wasn't standing there. He was hanging. From a tie down strap that I'd actually hung up there to um, work on motorcycles. I stood there frozen. I could see the dogs standing there looking at him like as puzzled as I was. Like, why isn't he moving? I had just had shoulder surgery. A pretty intense one, and uh, still couldn't use my left arm, and I panicked. I turned around, and I ran down to where Carrie was, because I could hear a car about to go into first gear. She backed out the driveway, you could hear that moment where she was going from reverse into first. She drove a white Ford Probe. Tinted windows. As I ran down the driveway. I had that cup in my hand and my cigarettes in the other hand and I'm running and I don't know what to say and I'm just going no 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 I hit Carrie's car. <laughs> and I collapsed to the ground. I threw my cigarettes and everything down. And she gets out of the car and she knows nothing of what's happened. She's looking at me, she's saying, Jeff, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? I'm just, she's going, is it satin? Is it satin? We'd had a dog that had, we'd had forever and she was in poor health. I couldn't say anything. I go, 
my dad, my dad, my dad, my dad, my dad. Why is it that dad hurt himself? <laughs> then I went into, I gotta get him down. I gotta get him down. She's asking what, 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 what? Oh my God, I gotta get my dad hung himself. I gotta get him down. He's in the carport. I ran up the driveway. I ran around my car because I'm thinking I got to get him down. I stood right there at the line of the edge where it goes from the driveway to the carport. And I was frozen. Never felt so weak in my life. I, I can't help you down, Dad. Like, I can't help you down. And the strap was so tight. It looked like somebody was just squeezing his neck. And the calm, the air was so calm. And I stood there, staring at him. His eyes were closed. His shoulders were sagging and his head was down as if he was looking at something so calm. And I instantly thought, Mom, Mom's in the house. Does she know? Does she know? Carrie runs up behind me and she's going, she doesn't know what to do. I said, I have to get my mom. I run through the gate, around to the front of the house, Carrie behind me, and I bust open the door. And I'm yelling, Mom, Mom, and I collapse up against the couch. I fell through the foyer into the living room and just up against the side of the couch. And I'm staring into the foyer and I'm screaming, Mom, 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 Mom! She came out of the downstairs bathroom. Right there, right there where I was. She came in there and the look in her eyes, she's just, Jeff, what's wrong? What's wrong? Jeff, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm sitting there frozen. I'm just looking at her eyes and she's going, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I don't want to say, but don't want to say it. And Carrie goes, Mr. Thresh, and I go, oh, no, no. Mom, Dad, hug yourself. <laughs> she what? 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 She starts screaming, he's in the carport, he's in the carport, mom, he's in the carport. I tell Carrie, you have to keep my mom right here. 
I run to the kitchen. I call 911. You have to get here as fast as you can. My father hung himself. No, I'm not staying on the line. Get here now. I ran to the drawer and I grabbed a knife. I ran to the back door through the game room and I'm looking through the window and I can see him hanging there. I can't do anything. I can't go out the back door. I go back to the kitchen and there's only a handful of numbers that I truly knew by heart and Tammy's was one. And I called Tammy, my oldest sister. And she answered the phone like Jeff was wrong. I was like, like, I just said Tammy and she just like instantly knew something was wrong. So Tammy, Dad, hung himself. So, We talked briefly. I got to go. The paramedics are here. It wasn't the paramedics. It was the cops. I mean, it was like a matter of seconds after I made the call. And the cops were there. And Janine was there. My Aunt Janine, she showed up somehow. I don't even know what the hell she was doing there. But like all these people like popped in at once. And I'm like, my dad's in the carport. Somebody please go cut him down. Please go help him. God, go help him. Paramedics got there right after that, and they were back there quick. They got him down fast. Still remember the sound of them popping the buttons off his shirt. He was in a button-up shirt. The sound of the buttons hitting the ground. And then the sound of the scissors cutting through his shoes. And the sound his body made where they put him on the gurney. And the way he looked when they shocked him. And then they rolled them past me. And I'm the little heart monitor. It looked like there was activity. I went inside and I told my mom, 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 look at me, look at me, you have to look at me. She opened her eyes and she looks at me and she starts screaming and says, I can't look at you. So when I look at you, all I see is him. I went and called Tammy back and told her they're taking him to the hospital. I think they might have had a pulse. And then I told my Aunt Janine, things kind of, the cops were there, things were, we had to start figuring out what do we do next. I said, I'll, I'll go tell Sarah. I'll go tell Sarah and the kids. Janine was going to go get Lance. Eric was in Mexico with Jenny at the time because it was Eric's graduation. So he was down there for a class trip. So we had to start making phone calls of
of the dad that hung himself. I, uh, I told Carrie, I said, I need you to come with me to Sarah's. I think she drove. We got there and I went inside and told Sarah, no, or Carrie, I don't, don't I mean, it, it, this is one reason why I'm telling this right now because memories start to fade. I don't remember if I went in, if Sarah went in, or Carrie went in. Sarah came outside. Wesley was there, and that was her boyfriend. Cole and Michaela were in there, and um, Sarah came outside, and I told her that Dad had hung himself. She thought I was joking. And then I was, told her I was being serious. And so she had her freak out moment. I asked Carrie if she would stay and watch the kids while Sarah went and helped with my mom. And then I needed to go talk, that I needed to go deal with something. She goes, what? I need to go talk to Booger. She goes, Jeff, I need to go talk to Booger. Okay? She knew I already didn't like my dad, the psychiatrist. And that's exactly what I wanted was him. So I went and got Booger, and I showed up at his boat shop where he's the the manager. You know, he runs the place. And I I pull in, and I say, uh, hey, man, need you to get in the car, Booger. Come on, bro. Let's go. Get in the car. He goes, I'm working. I can't just leave. I, no, I'm not asking. I need you to get in the car. Let's go. I need you to get in the car. And so he... Uh, He's like, no, I can't. Like, I'm not fucking asking. Get in the fucking car. So he got in the car. And we're going down the road. He goes, dude, what are we doing? Man, just got to go for a ride, okay, dude? We got to go for a ride. What do you think about this song? I don't even know what it was. Metallica, something, Candlebox. I don't know. Man, it's like several minutes. And he's like, where are we going? I'm like, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. I knew where uh, my dad's doctor's office was, but I didn't know where it was inside the building. So we pull in there, and I say, uh, Booger, I need you to help me find Dr. Numbnuts. And he goes, uh, it's right, la, la, la. we found it, boom, okay, 107. So we walk down to 107, and we walk in there, and I'm like, bam, hey, what's up? And this nurse is like, hey, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, you can go get, get Dr. What's-His-Nuts right now. And she goes, he's in session. I don't care. Now, granted, I'm 6'4". I am not a thick dude. I'm, I mean, if I turned sideways and stuck my tongue out, I'd look like a zipper. And I got this gimp-ass shoulder. But when a six-foot-four guy comes in your office and says, you better get that fucking doctor now, you go get that doctor. And that's what she did. Standing there, and Booger is just pestering me. Jeff, what are we doing here? He thought we were there because he thought it was my shoulder surgeon, the guy who screwed up my first surgery. He thought I'd had enough and was going to just mess that guy up. So, Dr. Numbnuts walks around the corner. He's a lot smaller than I thought. He's like 5'7". 
little Richard Dreyfus looking motherfucker. Beard and all, little sweater, glasses. God, I hate hitting guys with glasses. Oh. He goes, yes, may I help you? I said, I'm Jeff Thrasher, Scott Thrasher's son. He said, well, I can tell you, you, uh, you look a lot like him. I said, I did. He killed himself this morning. I hear Booger behind me gasp. And Reagan, I'm standing there just waiting, like, what's your next move? What's your next move? I brought my best friend to keep me from killing you. That's what's going through my head. And I was ready. The wrong thing could have come out of his mouth. And in that moment, you can call it premeditated all you want. I thought about every single thing I was going to do to that guy when I drove over there. He said, oh my God, what, what, are you okay? And he started asking sensitive questions. I could tell that it messed him up. I'm pretty sure he saw it in my eye as well. Today might be it, bro. I said, just wanted to come here and tell you face to face. I found my dad hanging from a rope. Look in my eyes. Because that's all you can see. It's all I can see. I wanted you to know that. He said, if there's anything I can ever do to help you, please let me know. I said, I think you've done enough, Doc. Have a good fucking day. We walked out and we got in the car and we cried. And I took Burger back to work. And then I got a page from Chuck at the antique store. And see, back then people didn't have cell phones like they do now. That's right, I had a pager. And my girlfriend had a cell phone that she liked to bitch at me for using. Quite honestly, since I was about to dump that sucky bus, I didn't give a shit. So I called Chuck and I said, hey, what's up, man? Where you at? So I'm stuck between the A and the T, man. I'll be there in a minute. Okay? Don't worry about it. So I pull up to work. I go inside, sit down. I tell Chuck, I don't think I'm going to work today. Now, I was late like I always was. That ain't no shit. The only way you knew I was going to be at work on time was if time was 10.35 because McDonald's quit selling pancakes at 10.30. Took about five minutes to get from McDonald's to work. That was on time. And then lunch was at noon. So, I told Chuck, I'm not working today. I said, why not? I found my dad hanging from a rope this morning. 
He's at the hospital. I'm not sure if he's alive or not. He said, what are you doing here? Because I'm too afraid to be at home. I don't know if I can go back there. I went back into the break room. I called the house just to check in, see if they'd heard anything. I am not sure who told me that he was gone, that he did not make it. I don't remember. sat back there for a minute had a cigarette by myself and I cried and then I pulled it together and then I went to the hospital Booger's dad was a uh, physical therapy he was the head dude of physical therapy at Good Shepherd and I figured if anybody could get me some answers of what happened Vic could so I went there and met with Vic. He and Wanda, his wife, she worked with him, um, took me to go meet the, uh, the head guy, the head ER doctor. And I wanted to know how long my dad had been hanging there. And he asked, why do you want to know? Is it because you're going to spend forever wondering if you would have got there five minutes earlier, it would have been a different outcome? And I said, most people would be that way. But I'm not. My mind needs to make sense of this. My mind needs to understand the timeline of when he got up, put on his shoes, buttoned his shirt, combed his hair, My niece had had an upset stomach the night before. My mom had been up all night with her. And she was actually sleeping in Lance's old room. And my mom distinctly remembers having the door open when she last saw Marissa. But when that morning happened, the bedroom door was closed. So he closed it. He, he went through certain motions that morning. And he took a bar stool. And he put it outside and he stood on top of it. And he took a strap that I had tied up there. I had put it up there because it was strong enough to hold up the front end of motorcycles to get the front end off so we could work on the front, the front brakes and stuff. I'd walked past that thing several times and slapped it as I walked past it going, I need to take that down. I'm the type of person that I can jump off of cliffs. I've done it. Skiing. Off of bridges. Skydiving. It took my dad the amount of courage to drop the roughly one foot that he did an insurmountable amount of pain to make a person overcome that. I've done a lot of things that I've pushed past of that. Holy shit, am I really doing this? I'm, yes, I'm really doing this. 
I had these really cool outcomes. Some of them came with broken bones. Some with glory. Some with scars. So I asked that doctor, I want to know this, not so I can beat myself up of saying, if I hadn't have gone to McDonald's and had those delicious pancakes, would my dad still be alive? Because in reality is, if he was willing to do it now, he'd be willing to do it tomorrow. So I'm not going to beat myself up over that. I'd like to know how long he's there because it makes sense in my mind. He said, well, I can tell you this, and this is how we know. Your father was there long enough that the blood had pulled in his feet long enough that you wouldn't have been able to have changed anything. I said, okay, that's all I need to know.